more and more insane. It is. Um, indeed, indeed, it is. As is our game here. I mean, it's, it's going to be very interesting. NIP and Optic, and uh, they're both 1-1 one, one in the stats right now. So no one's going home from this game, but you've got your back to the wall if you lose this one, then you've, you've pretty much run out of rope. So we'll see how this one goes. It will be Optic Gaming starting on the CT side. It'll be NIP on the T side. And both of our analysts uh, picking an IP ever so slightly. It didn't sound like super convincing, but mm -hmm. they thought an IP could do this. Well, I think so as well, to be frank. Optic have only played Overpass, played Overpass so far this tournament, and there's a lot of information to go off of. Nip will be prepared. They are the kind of team to do, you know, play field, but also anti-strat, and look at this, already in the pistol. Very quick execution, and Rush is just hitting headshot after headshot. Uh. Not gonna get a third, and finally, existing get right gonna get into the fray, but Rush did some work. Yeah, it's a shame they couldn't follow up on that. That's such a good double kill from the beginning, but now three on three, the bomb about to go down. Mixwell, Tarrant, and Nafly trying to see if they can retake this. They do not currently have a kit picked up. I'm not sure if there's one on the ground somewhere, but they're going to have to find that just to make the defuse a bit easier. And NIP putting out some pretty deep... Uh, well, that's just a decoy. I thought maybe it was a smoke, but Naf going to pick up the kill on Get right there. Forest and Exist are left both over by the l -bend. They've got eye on the bomb if they need it. Still, the kit has been picked up here by Nafly. Mixwell trying to find that shot on Forest in the corner. Nobody's defusing yet. This is taking forever. Forest going to be going down. And finally, they'll have the turnaround Nafly on the defuse, and it's actually a flawless retake from Optic. Yeah, keeping all three players alive, keeping that kit in play. Sure, they cut it a bit close there at the end, and I'm a bit surprised to see Forrest not hitting any shots with that USP once he actually gets it, or with the pistol in general. Forrest still one of the stronger pistol players in the field. So to have him not really get into the fight and just kind of struggle to land shots, that is a little nerve-wracking for NIP. But it isn't the end of the world here. We do want to keep eye an eye on Forrest, though. I do feel like he is going to be one of those key players here for NIP. I mean, yes, Exist has been playing out of his mind so far this tournament, but it does feel like NIP still kind of live or die off of Get Right and Forrest, between the two of them, and in particular Forrest, I think. They really need him to hit his shots for them to have a chance here, because Optic, I mean, yes, okay, they've done nothing but play Overpass. It feels like we've been watching them play Overpass nonstop for the past couple of weeks, but they are comfortable on this map, Optic. They know what to do. Feels like last time they played it, it was Exist who was having an, an outstanding performance, right? He went yeah, completely mental on this game. 21 so. kills in 16 rounds, I think it was. Yeah, so. so maybe we could look to him as well to try and do something. We've got a pretty good stack at the B bomb site, and there's no reason in a round like this why Optic would do anything other than play defensively. Like, they don't have to control restrooms or anything else like that. That comes later when NIP have rifles too, but right now, they should be confident. Yeah, that's a tough thing. That was yesterday versus HR, but I mean, not enough for Exist, even with that kind of scary performance to net the win for Nip. Nice pincer movement here onto Stanislaw, but he's still gonna pick up two kills with the UMP. Rush and Nafly rotating in, pick up the remaining shots. And so far, this eco round not really going too hot for an IP. Kaith is gonna be able to pick up another kill, so they do have that, but no bomb plant for an IP. So no, I still think this is pretty good. Like, getting those two kills is absolutely fine. They, they're gonna be all right with that. They got the bomb plant anyway, so they knew they were gonna buy this round. Um, so just get damaging the economy of Optic. It definitely nope. makes a big difference. It's just, you know, if you get that bomb plant, you get the op for Forrest, maybe, if he wants it. You can even drop it off of Exist. He had a lot of money, and Pyth had a lot of money. So, I mean, like, you might have had more options. You, had, you certainly would have had more nades. So, just not a flawless start here for NIP, but still. 2-0 lead for Optic Gaming on the CT side. Mixwell sticking on the MP7. That's interesting. You know you're gonna, they're going to be buying Mixwell. I guess because he wants to hold close quarters here in Connector. It's not a bad weapon to have, the MP7, if you're up close, at least, with the SMG. Yeah, you know, you jump down the stairs and shoot people mid-air. I mean, it, it works. It definitely works. But NIP with an early chance to turn the tide here. And because they got those two kills in the last round, you, on the scoreboard, you can tell that Optic don't have really that much money on Stanislaw and Tarek. So that's going to come back to haunt them if they lose this round. So far, NIP are being given a lot of big control here. Mixwell and Tarek are now moving up ever so slightly. And Tarek, is he going to be able to flash anyone? And he gets a headshot first, actually, on Python. With the right flashbang here, is it going to come in? Mixwell still just standing his ground, and Tarek's going down. Not sure why they didn't try and combine that, and now Mixwell is entirely alone. He's going to be going down. I think a misplay between those two players. They should have done something with that flashbang instead of just having them play individually. Miscommunication, perhaps, where it just got, it got fuzzed up. I mean, Nip were really quick to actually pounce on Tarek and move. Not a lot, a lot of time there. Nafly going to hit one, two headshots. Okay, individual performance again. Are we going to get another star show here from Nafly? We're three rounds in, and those were two very clean kills that completely turn it around here. Give Optic the edge. Might be able to find the one on Get Right, but Get Right sprays him down point blank. And a two on two now with 30 seconds left. Nip looking to get the bomb plant, but we have a late rush or a late flank coming in rather from Stanislaw in mid. 
So now they're caught in a crossfire here, NIP. This is tricky. Oh, a rush going to find the kill on Get Right. That's coming in from the bank. But he got the bomb down now. Exist. This is your time. You did so well on this map last time. You get this one on two in, and your team is going to be off to a flying start here. It's ticked for quite a while, but they both have the fuse kits, and once they know where he is, they even have Molotovs and grenades here, and the spray not even going to work. Rush so quick with the adjustment. You're going to get the double kill, and that will be Optic winning the third round. Very well done. Man, and that was nice positioning for him. Just look at where that bomb was planted as well. It would have been perfect if he wins that duel versus Rush. There's no way you're getting that defuse in. Tough, tough break for Nip. But... They're getting plants, Anders. We've had three rounds. They've succeeded in getting two bomb plants. I mean, that's a feel-good moment there for NIP. If you're getting bomb plants, you're going to have money to work with. You're going to have extra nades. And you can go for these kinds of rounds like half buys, right, where you go for Tech 9 Kevlar, which we've seen work for teams in the past, where they can still win rounds, even with this equipment. So NIP not out of this fight, but Optic are off to a solid start here. 3-0 lead for them on the CT side and fully bought up now going into this round. And getting a lot of control. Optic saving the really aggressive play where you run up all the way to the corner of birthday. They're saving that for later, it seems, because I suspect that's going to come out if they really start feeling confident. We've seen Mixwell do that in the past where he'll run up and just try and fight someone early on. Tarek, though, caught sleeping. Gets taken out by Pyth. That's a nasty spot for Tarek to be in. He's alone. He's got two angles he has to worry about when he's over there. I mean, it's just a... Uh, a tough spot to, to find yourself in. If you're Tarek, you get caught looking the wrong way, and there you go, that's what happens. Not gonna miss that shot, Pyth. So now they have a rifle to play with, and it's on Pyth. He's got Kevlar helmet as well. And Nip actually have some options here with a minute left on the clock. Optic have used quite a bit of their utility as well. Stanislaw over on the B site hasn't seen anybody yet. That's why he's fully equipped. But that is tough, because if Nip want to rotate down there, they're gonna be dealing with an incendiary, a smoke, an HE. They can take a lot of damage. You're, it's absolutely true, and I'm wondering and NIP have one smoke. It's unlikely they would be able to put it down exactly where Stan and, and Rush are. They're probably going to use it for the sniper spot, if anything. I think they already actually put it in there. So let's get right on the other side, making a lot of noise here with the Tech 9, trying to draw people over and doing an all right job so far. But Nafly going to hit another headshot. He's really on point in that position. Now they're on the bomb site. The bomb is being brought up and exists in the back line there. So now four versus four. Grenade going to rein in. Actually, does a lot of damage to Forrest without the armor. He's gone almost immediately. Fight with a great double return. Exist with one as well. And suddenly Stan is alone. One on two. Going to be sneaking in. Pyth has already got the triple kill he needs the quad here. I don't think Forrest could do too much with just the pistol here and very low health. Good positioning here from Stan. Going to pick up the first kill. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. He has the kit and even a smoke. He's going to hold it right away. And Pyth going to go for the peak. There's the quad kill. And he's going to save an IP. What a round from Pyth. The quad kill clutch in the end. But more importantly, it looked like there was maybe a fumble there because he had the aim. You saw he was dead on when Pyth goes for the peak. How is he not letting go of that bomb to take that shot? Oh, I mean, it's, it is difficult, right? Because you, even when you let go, there's like that second before you can shoot, right? So maybe he just felt like if I'm lucky, he'll miss, you know, for one more second. And, and that's it. That's happened in the past, right? It has, you're right. 3-1, the fifth round coming up. And Forrest now with the AWP and Optic being reset in spite of winning three rounds in a row. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's this is a solid performance from it to continue to get bomb plants. That's so important. And now Optic, yeah, pistols for them. Going for a bit of a tricky play here towards Sewers and B, but they aren't going to find anybody. NIP are holding as passive as possible right now. They're not going to give Optic any kind of easy shots. Freiburg is only the real one at risk here, kind of at risk over in Connector. And that door open tells them something, tells them that they've at least taken over Sewers. So a little bit of info here for Nip to play with. And Forrest actually going to rotate down with that AWP, looking to get a pot shot. And there it is. Boom, Forrest connects. nafly has gone. And a man advantage for NIP in this anti-eco round. So there is a setup in the B-bomb side. It's a really minor one, but Rush does have a flashbang, and they have Mixwell and Tarek there as well. I like this. I, th I think people should just make it a habit to, to try for these kind of flash set setups if they're mm -hmm. not doing anything else. Just get three, four people in the bomb side and see what happens. But uh, they're wrapping around back to the A-bomb side. Right now, that seems like it's a good call. And this the setup could be used here. I mean, say it's a setup, but you can improvise it almost anywhere. You know, it's just a question of counting the three and throwing a flashbang and then having people peek in behind it. It's not exactly rocket science, but let's see if they're going to make it work anyway. Rush, he's really the key man here. We, we need to figure out when he's going to put in that flashbang. You see he's ready for it. They know they're going to be coming long. Oh, that Molotov, though, is going to make peeking really difficult. They're trying anyway, but... Yeah, that's a good grenade from NIP. That wasn't a good flash, though. It went way wide, way too deep. Nobody on Nip blind at all, even though they were all running straight into it. 
we could have a, a, a wall of Santa Eco here, actually, because they figured out where Mixwell's playing from. Pyth looking to take the fight, and they're going to chase him back down. A, a Flawless Eco would be perfect here for NIP, actually. This would be excellent for their economy. If Mixwell does manage to pick up a kill, that would get tricky, but... He's just trying to keep somebody on this bomb. If he can do enough damage to Pyth and hold him long enough on the bomb site, stay alive, right? Maybe he gets the bomb to take out Pyth, even if he doesn't. Yeah, that would certainly be a big win, but in the end, it's Freiburg through the fence. Gonna be able to take him down. 3-2 as the scoreline. And you're right, nobody going down on NIP. And up to gaming. I mean, four of them, I'm sorry, three of them can buy fairly comfortably. The rest, the other two, are going to be in a tricky position to do on by anyway. It's not like this is a weak map for Nip as well, right? They lost, sure, they lost on overpass yesterday versus Hellraisers, but that was in overtime. 1917 win for Hellraisers, right? So, NIP, I mean, sure, Hellraisers got taken out this morning in the winner match in the 2 0 match versus Gotham, but it should still be a situation where NIP have to be feeling very confident on this map. It's Optic, really, you know, who've had two chances so far on overpass to get wins and who have been struggling so far. Both of these teams are 1-1 right now in the groups. Ooh. Great grenade, get right, gonna get wrapped in. Oh, but what is this? They walk right in front of him. Russian Stanislaw, so eager to get the kills, and instead they bunch up right in front. And now what they have left, look at this, they had to buy the Famas on Mixwell and the Deagle on Nafly. So they're really low on equipment. You wanna walk into Get Right Spray? This guy has been known for his spray. Like he had god tier spray at the very beginning of CSGO. It was unbelievable. He would spray people from halfway across the map sometimes. <laughs> so you can always count on Get Right to keep his cool. Get Right's idea of a good Friday night is, you know, spend a couple hours throwing some smokes, and then I just sprayed, you know, practice my spray for two hours. You know, that's Get Right is one of the hardest working pros in the yeah. scene, flat out. And he's been doing this. This has been his job forever, basically. Like, I think it's his only job that he's ever had has been a pro CS player. It is true. Um, and yeah, I actually know he's been doing it even more recently. He's been spending a lot of time in Deathmatch and stuff like that originally. I talked to him a bit because we went to get a haircut together. So uh, he said he's been he's been really, really working the, the Deathmatch servers a lot and trying to just improve himself. That's a beautiful grenade, Fry, but he doesn't do anything, but that was... Uh, can we see that from more angles? That was, that was incredible. I, uh -huh. It's worth learning how to throw that even if it doesn't do anything. Tarek, with almost no chance, he was being wrapped by Freiburg as well. That leaves it on Nafly with the stolen AK, one versus three. Nafly, the last time they played, he was off to a really slow start. Him and Rush both were, were a bit slow at the gate, but once they got rolling, they really got rolling, and we've seen this from Nafly in the past. But Forrest, gonna edge him out with a cheeky peek of the AWP. We'll make it a tied scoreline at 3-3. Three, three. Oh, this is sick. They line it up perfectly. Dead on forget right after getting down to 56 HP from an HE as well. I mean, this is brutal. If you're rushing Stanislaw, that's gonna rattle you a little bit because you know you should have had that kill. You know you should have dropped Get Right right there. You're, you would have had the man advantage. Everything would have gone great, but instead, NIP, they tie it up 3-3, three, three, and it's Eco here for Optic. Again, Nip are doing a fantastic job of maintaining the pressure on Optic's economy, not letting them get all the grenades, not letting them get the buys that they want to. This is gonna be instrumental here if Nip are, are to take this win, get up to a 2-1 scoreline in the groups. And Optic setting up for, I mean, I'm, it makes me upset to think about it. If we bring up the big map here, this setup right now, if one person had a flashbang, this would be beautiful. They could wait until Nip get out onto the birthday area, and they could all rush out from their hiding spots and just charge in there. Instead, they don't have any. This is upsetting, Samla. Why not just invest in $200? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why don't you go for the SK? Yeah, you know, Brazilian team, they love to do that. I mean, it's it's such a it's such a good way of playing it, but um, they are they've got collective control, and they're just hoping that someone from NIP will uh, meander in there eventually and and maybe give them an AK. I think that's the best case scenario right now. It looks like maybe Russian Stanislaw are going to be. I mean, I don't think this is a good position, but we'll see. It's tough. I mean, if Forrest gets caught, he's kind of open, kind of wide. Doesn't really have anybody to watch him. In the sense that it is going to be Exist just charging forward first. But point blank, that's exactly what they wanted. Now they've got an AK to play with. Rush is going to trade. Forrest missed the shot. Rush converts. And Rush nearly gets another kill. Freiburg down to 46. Man advantage now for Optic. Still on the pistols, but they've done some serious damage to NIP. They put a lot of pressure here on the Swedes. Some real mystery as to how that was played. And I actually think maybe Exist had a different plan in mind from his teammates then. 
this. He was turning around as if expecting someone to throw a flashbang in, which you normally do. You just pop a flashbang in there, and nothing came. So he just had to walk in and got shot in the face. Very weird from an IP. Yeah, right, gonna lose the fight to Mixwell. And things are looking ever better for Optic here. This would be a huge upset round if they could pull it through. Freiburg gonna go for the long range. Paper. Oh my god, Mixwell, what a shot. Just actually dodges the bullet mid-air. That was And gorgeous. then lands for the headshot. Beautiful round. Oh man, what movement. That was sick. And I wonder if we will, I don't know if we'll get the replay or not, but if you see, Normally, you see. Normally, you would pop a flash in, and it's such a common play, which is which is why I was saying I, I don't think that position is at all that good, because almost everybody flashes to check that corner. Nearly everybody on Nip there had full utility, like just not a single nade user. Yeah. And before that happened, exist he was on the bench, and you saw him turning his back, which is sort of an indication that he's ready for someone to throw a flashbang. Yeah. And then you sort of, no, nah, we'll just walk in and get wrecked. We'll just face peek. Why? Why go full face? Well, that's the kind of mistake that can definitely hurt if you're an IP. An eco round oh, win yes. for Optic, that can turn it around. I mean, both teams now have had a round really where they shouldn't have won, right? Nip won their half by with the Tech 9 Kevlar. Now Optic have won an eco round. And it's so tight, it's still tit for tat. But there's the opening from Get Right once again. And man, this, this is coming back to what I was saying. If him and Forrest start waking up here, this is going to get real tricky. But Forrest has only got the three kills so far in eight rounds. Not a fantastic start for Forrest, but if you've got Get Right, at least you're cooking with something here. Stanislaw had one of the double ops there, so that's a that's tricky now. One of those is out of play. I think the fire from the Molotov just obscured his view enough that he couldn't see what was going on. And Rush is alone on the bomb side. Mathfly is actually rotating in the other side. Rush, can he find the right angle right across the smoke? The bomb is going down, but he's in a position here. But oh, Pyth, he reads that so well and get right. Going to follow up with a headshot on Mathfly, and this round is done. This, wow. Yeah. Time to run, time to go, and get right's on the hunt. Spots out, Mixwell. Let's see if the, the fancy oh. movement's going to work. No, Tarek is there to save the day. So, still, two ops right now still here for NIP. Don't really want to see them hunting. I don't care if they lose another AK. Freiburg can go down and hail of bullets, and he will. But just keep both ops alive if you are an IP at this point, or your expensive rifles at least. Exist going to be the next one to get picked off. Now, Python is going to run one. Why are they running in one after another? I don't get it. You're literally running through smoke. But Forrest will find that kill on uh, Mixwell, so considering the economy on Optic, that's still a pretty big hit for them to be losing that last rifle. NIP, they can rebuy. I do agree it's a bit silly. If you're going to go hunting, at least just group up and then go for it. Um, ties up the scoreline again at 4-4. NIP, they're playing on the less favored side of this map, so I think they're all right with how this is unfolding at the moment, especially because if they can win this round, then they will push up to get into another eco and suddenly things are looking great. I think we have to give some props to um, Forrest, that hair. He, uses, he must use a sick brand of shampoo. It's just got that sheen to it, that shine, and the man bun. And the man bun. Okay, right. Trying his very best. It would have been interesting if someone could have come in from El Ben to help him out there or help out the rest of Optic, but... Not quite the case. Rush and Nafly with that setup that they've been using so much down there, where Rush is playing on the slope and Nav is playing close to Monster Tunnel. It, to me, it seems like one that could be exploited really easily if you know it's there. And because everyone must have been watching the demos from Optic, they should know that, that that's a common setup. But still, it's been working very well. Rush especially has been getting so many kills from that position. I'd say it is one of their core kind of default setups on CT. Tarek is out here again alone. At least he doesn't have to worry about long this time because there is Mixwell there holding that angle with the AWP, which is why he can purely focus on this smoke here in mid. I'm still just a little worried. It's going to come down to a feel for him when he's going to decide to back off and count on Mixwell to watch it because now he's going to get overwhelmed. Double peak, perfectly done there by NIP. And well, Stanislaw and Mixwell, they, they are going to have to back off, although it looks like Stanislaw wants to go for some tricky play. He's got Mixwell covering him, but again, if Mixwell misses this shot, then Stan is in a lot of trouble. Actually, is he going to move forward? I like this more. This is good play from Stanislaw. The timing is even perfect for it. Much prefer the aggressive style when you're in that corner now. Four versus four. And look at the clock look here. 40 seconds, not 20 seconds left, sorry. And Nafly going to be picking up the good first kill there on Get Right Forest with the refrag. Taking down Naf. The bomb is going to be planted here in a three on three. And Rush is going to get Molotov back already. That's the last grenade that NIP have. There is no defuse kit on Optic Gaming right now. And Stanislaw is coming in from behind. Actually, Freiburg going to take him down. That is the huge kill right there. Now they know they can focus on just the main entrances and Mixwell already running for it. Yeah, they have no kit, no nades. 
and I'm surprised that Forrest throws out the Molotov, because in his position at Monster, he can get that to deny a defuse as well if he loses a teammate. But still, NIP, they get the job done in the end. It looked a little a little dicey there for a moment, but luckily Forrest was there to back up Get Right and trade that kill. That was pretty much the key frag of the round, because otherwise, with 20 seconds left, Nip don't have time to get onto that site. If they are not able to get that kill, it's over pretty much. It's done, because the rotation will come through, and it's all over. So... Still so very close, but Nip will pull ahead. Not able to find the saved rifles at the end, but still five to four. And <laughs> that is game command in action. Someone is, that's actually almost the same setup that I have. I just have one monitor foot instead of the three, but it's still great. Three monitors is definitely the lifestyle to, to, be, to be living. So amazing, so amazing. So much I, that way. That way, I can be unproductive on three monitors at once. It feels good. <laughs> Stanislaw is down to the B bomb side alone. They also only have the AWP and the M4. And if you only save this little equipment, I prefer you try and do something with it. Go somewhere and find a kill because if you're just waiting around, there is a good chance that you know you'll be in the wrong spot and then you just can't do anything. So I'd much rather that they. This should have been one of those rounds. I think where Mix One and Rush try to go aggressive together over on the A side of the map. I mean, I like it. They're trying to play against Nip. Nip are a big fan of taking long when they know that their opponents are going to be ecoing. And so they're trying to set a trap here, Optic, where it's like we have the op. If they try and come long, we have a rifle to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And then we've had success here in the past, obviously. So Optic trying to make some adjustments here to catch Nip off guard. But Nip this time around, they're one step ahead. There's nobody here on B to stop them from getting into the site. And Nip are going to get a free bomb site. So this is just one of those times where Optic, they're like, you know, it's, they're trying to brain their opponent. They're trying to actually, like, get into their heads. But unfortunately, you know, Nip, they just, they don't even know what's going on. So it's all good. Sometimes, uh, you know, that's just the way it plays out. It is. I, I just, that's why, uh, that's why I said I, I prefer if you're the one taking the initiative rather than, rather than sort of, you know, just giving a hostage fortune and hoping that maybe you could, uh, you could eventually, you know, someone will come running to your position. It can happen. But, um, and actually if it had happened, I mean, it probably would have been a good setup for Optic. I just... I think they need to be more active. I, they haven't yet. We sort of said earlier that they were playing more defensively over at the yeah. birthday area side. But now they're playing very, very defensively all the time. When is that aggressive play going to come out? Well, who do you want to be active, right? Mixwell. But that's the tough thing, is that Mixwell has expressed in the past in interviews that he is not 100% confident in his ability to op. He will actually hand that op over to Nap or to Stan. Rather than, and you know, that's the thing. It's like. That key, like, aggression from offers is 100% confidence-based. I, I would say this. Take Mixwell, run him up to that corner over by the, the birthday party area. Then let him take the shot. If he gets it, great. If he doesn't, turn around, give it to Nafly instead or something. And then, you know, that's I get it. You. Like, literally just one shot. I just want him to try and do that uh, one time. I think they're letting NIP get way too much map control early on. And also, they're not really applying enough pressure. I mean, NIP must be feeling great early on. Stanislaw is making the run, and Mixwell is sort of close behind him. They're not running all the way to the corner, but at least it's more aggressive than it just was. And actually, now Mixwell is moving forward. This is the third time we've seen this boost. They love this boost. Optic just want to peek into sewers. They want to catch Get Right, and Get Right's going to show up. Surprise! Oh, Stanislaw hits the shot, but Get Right might—that would have been a joy for Get Right if he kills Stanislaw. Everything works out for him. Instead, it's Tarek taking down Pyth as well. A two-man advantage now for Optic in a key round. It's six-four. The lead for Nip. But now Optic, after all of the trials and tribulations, is actually looking pretty good for them here. Yeah, strong start to uh, 11th round here. Now they can relax. They don't really have to challenge anywhere. They even have a strong setup down at B. And Mixwell and Tarek. Ooh, that, no, actually, that did hit Tarek. Did it? Uh, Tarek was boosted. I think Get Right, right was Maybe to he did the him. damage earlier. I just thought for a second that would have been in quite an impressive shot. If he could have taken on Terry, that would have left Mixwell alone on the bomb site. So, very interesting if that could have happened. I wanted it. I deeply wanted it to happen. 40 seconds now on the clock and NIP. It's so hard to come back in a round like this. At least they have some utility. Mm -hmm. And because of the setup on Optic here, it's possible for them to just get a kill on A and, and continue on and get the bomb down. This will take a mistake, basically. Oh, there's the shot. Mixwell holding the angle. Forrest takes it. Beautiful shot there from Forrest, but he gets caught by Tarek. Tarek flashed, however, has to give ground, and he's going to get caught. Burnt alive by Exist and his Molotov. Three on three, and Nip have found a way to get onto the A site. All it took was one kill and a double Molotov. Actually, Tarek had nowhere to run. Now, it's a three on three, and Optic, they got to get this retake. Otherwise, their economy, once again, will be very bad. They desperately need it. 
And the, can they do it? They only have one flashbang and a couple of defuse kits here. They're taking a lot of time. There's a grenade going in. Sorry, the HE grenade and that fly gonna come charging through, taking out Forrest, getting another kill. That's Rush helping out to take down Exist. And now it's all on Freiburg and he's isolated in the corner. Stanislaw taking him down and the NIP. How did they do so little damage in that retake? <laughs> a, a, a flawless flashbang. It's a flawless but, flashbang. Look at the splash. Two of them, full blind. Boom. Forrest doesn't know what hit him and exist. They're already on top of him by the time he can see again. That's like, that's, there's your $200 value, Anders. Unbelievable. Hey, value. Unbelievable. Oh, Nip going for a pause. Is this tactical? Or, oh, oops. We'll find out. We'll find okay. out. We have a technical pause. It is a mic issue for NIP. It seems like perhaps Freiburg having a bit of a mic issue there, a sound issue. So, technical timeout. The money, though, for the Swedish Ninjas is great. So even even losing this round, they can easily buy. Even if they lose this next one, probably still going to be able to put together some sort of buy. We're in the 12th round, and it's it's. I would say it's a bad sign for Optic that they can even be in a 3v5 and then be in a position to lose that round. You know, they shouldn't have have given up the A bomb side that easily. They have one step back, have it right. There's the head-to-head, -head, tied up, actually, between the two of them. Pretty dead even, actually, between Rush and Pyth. ADR, kills, they're tied. It's only Pyth who's winning the unfortunate race of having the most deaths. But <laughs> only by one, so, I mean... <laughs> it looks like we're going live again, though. So it was just a short short little break there just to get something sorted out there for uh, Freiburg. But we're back into the mix. 6-5 lead for NIP on the T side here in the first half in this best of one. And this is, this is where... Another one of the key rounds, basically, because money is not fantastic for Optic. They've never really had a fantastic economy this entire first half. Nift has done a great job of, of keeping the pressure on them and never really allowing them to have all the nades to work with. So this is a big round here for Optic. They have everything they need. And a, whew, that HE, Forest existed, Pyth murdered. That has got to hurt. And that's some nice aggression coming out early on from Optic. I wish they would do that even more, but... Just the grenade is uh, good enough. Tarek and Mixwell setting up over here by the restrooms again. And I, I have to say this one more time. Normally, people pop flash their way into that position. Pyth should get a teammate to throw a flashbang, and that's going to be hard. But look at this Optic Gaming catching them, but exists with a great double return. That's really big. Both of them headshots. Grenade going to come raining in. Will it catch Exist? He's down to three health, but still alive. Still hunting. Naf, though, with the aggro opping in mid, he's going to bring it back to a three on three at least. Now they are actually a little bit behind here on IP, considering the damage that Forrest took initially. Exists down to three HP. He can't get anywhere near that incendiary. He has to back off. And the bomb is making its way there. Between the two of them, they, cannot, they can't even think about going through that incendiary until it clears up, and that's going to buy valuable time here for the setup. Naf fly, he's got the angle on get right as well. So can get right hit this shot. Spots him, gets tagged down to 23. No return from him. Forrest is down as well. It's not looking good for an IP. Rush will finish the round with a very smooth triple kill there. Going to tie up the scoreline at 6-6. Rush with 12 kills. I think Duncan was pointing this out before we went into the match, that he, he really felt like Rush was the guy who had to come alive with his team. And, you know, when he did well, the team was looking better. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely true at the moment. Um, on the other team, though, Forrest get right towards the bottom of the scoreline. I mean, I love it, though. Look at this, how even it is. With Rush, he gets 12. That puts him three ahead, but everybody else, all the top fraggers were at nine before that, including him. So that pulls him ahead, but look at how even it is across both teams as far as kills are concerned. This is nuts. We're tied 6-6, and it's a dead even match. Yeah, someone needs to pull ahead and really put together a number of rounds here. NIP, they went for the buy in this one, and now going to get the first kill there. Freiburg going down. Rush with another double kill, making it work for his team. And in the end, it's going to be Forrest going down last rush. Three more kills in the round, putting him at 15 and 6. He is taking off right now and putting up to get seven rounds. This is a very good job. This is something I noticed when Optic were playing this map last time. They were off to such a terrible start. I think they lost like the first six or seven rounds in a row and things weren't looking good for them. It was versus and phase, still, they the managed to half. actually come back. They, they sort of mentally stayed in the game and brought it back to quite an interesting game. I mean, that's what I want to tell, talk about though, and this is the point I was exactly about to make off, is that Optic, they struggled mightily on their CT side versus phase, yes, but then their T side was lackluster as well. They need these rounds, Optic. They need to come out ahead 9-6, because what we saw yesterday from them on T was not that impressive. And, well, I mean, NIP on CT side, 
you're dealing with get right hitting shots, it's going to be brutal. So this this is this is really going to go the distance here between both of these teams. Think I think it was way too evenly matched right now. Rush will find the opening kill on Freiburg, but this is an eco round coming in from NIP. Four deagles in play. Again, a couple of kills here would still make a pretty big difference. Optic have actually a decent bank, so they would need to get something like three kills in this round for it to really have an impact on the on the game at all. We're in the 14th round, so we're nearing the end of it, at least in the first half. If it finishes 9-6, I think Optic are going to be just wiping the sweat off their brow and continuing on. Where I think NIP are going to be a bit upset because they definitely had the position and the economy to do much more in this first half here. I agree. Tarek being trapped in the corner. He's going to be going down, and now they've given up an M4 and an AWP here with a bomb plant as well. Get right, warping close range here with the AWP. Going to be scoped up, sneaking in. Are they expecting it? He misses the shot. Seven health left, and he's trying to make a run for it. Going to make his way back around the SWAT truck, and Forrest now, can he go aggressive? He's waiting for it. He has to do something, and he's going to be going down to Rush, who picks up another couple of kills, and get right now deciding, look, this AWP is maybe more valuable in the upcoming round than... You can't blame him for it. The bomb is on the other side. He can't do anything to stop the defuse either. So 17 kills on Rush here. Good stuff here by Get Right. Just looks to see like if, if he can get the pot shot, turn it into two players surviving for Optic, forcing them. Well, I mean, money is no issue for Optic, so it's more just holding onto the AWP. And that's good. Forrest will have an op now to work with. He had the money to buy one regardless, but they can really spread it out, get full nades across the board for everybody here on the team pretty much. So dead even buy for a dead even first half. Going into it, this has been crazy, Anders. It Eight really six. has been. It really has been. Four rounds in a row as well for Optic Gaming. Again, I mean, you were pointing this out earlier, but it's true. The amount of bomb plants that NIP get, even when they lose the round, Optic have won eight rounds, and I mean, like, what, four or Three. five of them or something have been defuses? Three? It looks like. Oh, four or five, yeah, defuses. Yeah. Three of them have been, like, kills. That's, that's actually wild. Yeah, five rounds of, that they've won have been defuses out of the eight. That's quite impressive. Uh, from NIP's point of view, I mean, that's uh, maybe also speaks to Optic's retake ability, but still, a default being set up here from NIP. Get right, the one though, lurking outside of B, and the rest of the team is somewhere else. There was a point in time where this is how it always was. I know. Get right, right being the lone, the lone lurker. You can say it, the lone wolf. The lone wolf. Well, the lone ninja, right? There you go. He operates alone, he's the anchor. And well, I mean, this is kind of like get right spot, taco spot, you know, just every time somebody goes and camps here now, I just think taco because really taco from SK loves to just sit out here in front of monster. Well, I don't know if he loves it, but he does it, sits there repeatedly and holds this angle because what's what's happening with get right holding that angle is that it allows Nip to focus on clearing mid, focus on clearing long, and they can always rotate back over because if get right knows nobody's pushed over here, they can always still have control of this part of the map and rotate that bomb back over towards B and hit B later on Nip. So it's so important that Get Right either finds a pick or just stays alive. And he's doing just that. Right now he's content to sit and wait. 30 seconds left in this round, Anders. That's not a lot of time. No, it's definitely not. But on the plus side, they've rotated almost everyone out of this speed bomb side. Stan going to be going down next in line. Rush on the bomb side. He's going to pick up one kill. He's got so many multi kills. There's another headshot coming in. Freiburg going down. Rush is doing such a lot of work for Optic right now. Solid as a rock, and there's a third one coming in. Nothing can stop this guy. 15 rounds through in the first half. It's 9-6 in favor of Optic, with Rush dropping 20 frags, just like that. He really took off in the last five rounds. Optic have won the last five rounds in a row. And that's just Rush going from, what, nine? Within, the, within those five rounds, he goes from nine kills up to 20. Just takes control. And that's what you expect to see out of Rush. I mean, Moses is going to be grinning at this point, because for him, Rush is always the key player on Optic. If he's hitting shots, Optic are winning. And so right now, this is this is going to rattle the ninjas just a little bit, but they get to shift over to the CT side now. And they yep. get to see what Optic have in store for them. I actually caught Rush back at the back at the hotel. You see him getting some this is this is obviously in the right in the beginning. But I actually caught him back at the hotel yesterday and he, he said I'm I'm not saying that I'm the sort of I'm better than everybody else, but I feel like the team doesn't work well when I'm not doing well. And I think that's like a that's an honest way of putting it, you know? Um like that I think that's perfectly reasonable to say. That, that's up there with like Olaf Meister when asked, you know, are you the best player in the world? He was like, well, I don't, I don't think I'm the best player in the world. 
But there's no one better. But there's no one better than me. No, but I mean, Russia's okay. Then Russia's version of it actually makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because I mean, it could be the sense. It could be the case that you know he was the, the sort of the ultimate player on this team, and they couldn't do anything without him. But I think it's just that there's something about the dynamic in the team that means if he's not playing his positions well, then nothing else really seems to work. So certainly working right now, nine six, and again. This is not an elimination match. You lose this one, you you still fight on in the qualifier, but um, you've almost made it if you win it. I mean, look almost. at look at the positions that he plays, though. Like, plays B Monster, that crossfire, that default setup that Optic love to go for, he's in such a tight spot because he's got a backup stand who's basically staring into a wall to dodge any flashbangs, but he's also got to worry about short and getting shot in the side of the head if he's looking towards Monster. So it's, he's playing very key spots. So if he hits his shots, yeah, it's going to make all the difference. Listen, this is not overkill at all. It, when, when, when you have joined the, the PC race, then you, you, you know the, there's no such thing as overkill. I'm Keep actually going. dead jealous. That is a beautiful set. That is gorgeous, man. It's even even more monitors for uh, you to be unproductive on. It's brilliant. I mean, that's the thing. That, you know, you want to have that big TV as well. You got the couch behind you. Go back, watch the matches. Here's the problem for me. I, I end up in a situation where I have, you know, like different stuff on two monitors. And on the third one, I have like Netflix with the show running or something. And sometimes I'll find myself later and I realize I have not watched this episode at all. It's just been running in the corner and I haven't seen it. So I'm going to have to rewind it. That's how it works. Well... We're into the second half here, 9-6 between NIP and Optic Gaming, and it looked like NIP were going to have a wonderful first half. At some point in the middle of this game, they were at 6-4. They had the economy, did everything going for them, and then it just Optic took over. They won the last five rounds in a row, and now suddenly they're looking very good. So if they win this pistol, who knows what will happen. They're certainly setting up for a big execute on the B-bomb side, but on the other side, NIP actually have a pretty good stack in here. Freiburg has an HE grenade. If it lands well, it could uh, wreak havoc down to the monster tunnel. Optic won the first half pistol as well. Keep that in mind. We saw a little bit of a taste there from Rush with the two headshots when Nip tried to rush B site. But if they win both pistol rounds, that's a huge advantage. That'll really put them in the lead, extend it. But the push is already coming through here. Mixwell takes point, leads the charge. Three players here for Nip, but they've all been smoked off nice and neat. Some really good smoke grenades here for Optic Gaming. Freiburg, grenade not longer in play. The bomb is going to be going down. Rush has a Molotov left, and NIP have no smokes to put it out. That's a huge problem. He's saving it, Rush. This is a play for the end of the round, and I love it. Optic, they put so much thought into this round already. Now they're going to try for the retake here, NIP, but they don't know about the Molotov, and it's going to burn them alive if they try for that defuse. Rush putting in right now. It lands right on it. Nafly picking up a couple of kills. There's a third one, a headshot coming in. It's just the last one left. Rush going to take him down, and Optic Gaming Finding a 10th round, Nafly with the triple, but then that grenade all along just really, in some ways, it's such a simple idea, but when you see it executed this well, you got to love it. This is a thing of beauty. Everything falling nicely into place. I mean, that's it. Yes, okay, the end game with the Molotov, but when everybody's hitting their headshots as well, it's just like, okay. Everything is perfect. 10-0, -oh, double digits now. 10-6, rather, sorry. But double digits for Optic. And now, I mean, they get their perfect start here in the second half, and we have NIP going for the eco prior on the grenades for the 19th round. They haven't invested in Kevlar this round. Come Although, on, <laughs> I mean, look at Get Right though. Did like, they just try and wall bang with the Mag 10? I mean, it's ambitious. Even if it works, how much damage are you really going to be doing? Uh, well, I just look at this passive stuff though here from Optic. I like it. Take your time. Play the clock. Wait for Nip to make the move. And right now, Nip are content to sit back and wait. They're not going for anything aggressive. They know that they're in a real tight spot here, the Swedes. And just to remind you all, both of these teams are 1-1 right now in the groups. I like the Nova shotgun from Get Right. I think that's interesting. And the boost down here. Some deagles scattered across the map. First one going to be tried there for Forrest. The flick not working out. And he doesn't want to recommit, which I don't blame him for. It looks like the long push. I mean, this is the this is just a standard thing if you're playing on the T side. If you know you're up against pistols, good chance you're going to end up going long. Mm -hmm. For this very reason, Forrest is trying to counter that with a deagle, because you're still going to get headshot no matter the range, basically at long. So with the deagle, you get that headshot, you get the kill. Forrest hoping to try and make that work, but it's not going to happen for him. And Pyth peeking mid might get caught by Rush. Barely makes it around the corner in time. Behind Optimus trying to hide. Forrest trying to support him as well. And this is tough. Where are the kills? Finally, Rush is going to find one. Pyth is gone. 
And now Forrest in a lot of trouble. The backup is there, and Get Right is also charging in with the shotgun behind, but I think his whole team is going to be gone by the time he gets there. Now for the double kill, and now Get Right. Can he find exit frags? That's the big question. Are they going to come over here? It's, it's unfortunate for him because he's long with a shotgun. So Forrest is there with the deagle. He doesn't care about range. You know, he can shoot for days. Get Right is just hoping that somebody is going to be like, all right, I'm just going to go long for some odd reason. And Nafly might oblige, but Nafly's got a Mac 10, so doesn't matter if Nafly dies. Okay, right. I'm gonna check the corner, and Rush will pick up a kill, just adding to his stack of 23 right now, and only six deaths. This is just really well done. I love little details like that. Rush with the peak at the end, just air control, perfect. Just clips right back around, baits the shot. That it's attention to detail like that. Rush with 23 kills as well, so. We'll see if he joins the uh, 30 Bomb Club. We've had quite a few of them so far throughout the first two days of this tournament. It's looking very likely, especially if you consider that NIP still can't really buy anything here. So he should be able to pick up a couple of more kills. He's also still got the UMP. They are just not a team to be trifled with here, Optic Gaming. I feel like we're sort of, we're past the age where we're just, you know, blatantly underestimating them. But it's still because it's it's such a recent sort of, you know, run of form here. I feel like it's still quite impressive that they're doing so well against so many different teams. That reminds me, actually, that uh, I need to make a quick correction on the stats. Automatic has, in fact, had two 30 bombs. 31 kills in the first two matches and 29 in the match today. So Automatic is hitting a nuts level. He's currently the only guy with two 30 bombs in the uh, 30 bomb club, but still. And yet, still, they're a match away from being eliminated. Class. Ah, no! I know! <laughs> that makes it really upsetting. Oh! oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Pyth. Leaves get right here. And in this round, Nafly picking up a triple with the MAC-10. That's so important here. It's up to almost $6,000 just based on that. Get right sneaking in. He's pulled off the silencer. He wants them to know that he's coming. Strike fear in their hearts. Or Tarek is, is the only one nearby. I mean, if he get right had a defuse kit right now and he took down Tarek, that could actually be it. But um, it is not going to happen. Instead, it will be a 12 to 6 scoreline here. And NIP, this is the first buy that they're going to have on the CT side. We do have a bit of a pause coming in, I think a technical one. So we'll see how that's going to unfold. But if they can't make this buy work, it's going to get really rough. Absolutely. And it is a technical. And it looks like it's... All right, it looks like we're ready. It looks like the countdown's begun, so just just a quick pause there. I mean, there's a big difference between tactical and technical. Players aren't allowed to talk in technical pauses, so they can't even take that as like, oh, well, you know, we can actually communicate a little bit, use this as an impromptu sort of tech pause. They just have to keep quiet. So going into this now, the key round, the key round for NIP, 12-6 for Optic Gaming. They've got everything they need here in this round. NIP have been able to scrounge together a buy. Pyth has got the AWP, not Forest. Interesting thing to note there. And NIP are stacking B. Four players on B very early on here. This feels like, this smells like an anti-strat, like a read. They're just thinking Optic is going to try and rush B right now. Yeah, I think I think they've probably been looking at some demos for us. That's a free kill going in there. It took a while, but he takes down Mixwell. And Stan is actually in position to catch him. If he tried to roll back into Sua, if he tried to walk back there, he would have been caught, I think. Now they're going to give up on the B stack. and rotate a couple of people back to A. This is a solid start right up until the point where Forrest does get himself killed. Stanislaw's patient is going to pay off there. Mm -hmm. The in-game leader for Optic ends up working for him, hits that shot, brings it back to a four on four. And they can even recover the AWP if they want. Exactly. Nafly rotates in with that bomb, picks it up. And so we're back pretty much even, except that Optic have so many grenades now. They have a huge advantage. Stanislaw going for that tricky flash again. Pyth not knowing what hit him, but they are going to rotate back up to the A side. It looks like here with 50 seconds left, Stanislaw checking mid. That bomb is so far away, though. It does worry me just a little bit. You kind of want to get it a little closer up into play. And there we go. Nafly starts running. So they're going to group up here, Optic. And let's see if they can actually push through onto the site. I think they've got a really good chance. NIP are not at a stage where their economy supports Molotovs at this stage. They've used everything almost. I mean, Exist has an HG grenade, but that probably won't stop the plant. So four versus four down to 25 seconds. And actually, Nafly trying for the shot through. I love it. He will never do that. He's going to get it on Exist anyway, but he doesn't quite take him down. And Rush has gone down to Python in the meantime. They're running low on health as well. Optic Gaming, they're getting shot out of this bomb site. Get right. Not welcoming them at all. And Nafly 
Gonna make a run for it with the AWP. That's so painful to watch. You know, they, like, Nafly has to run with his knife out to get up there with the bomb. They leave it down to like 20 seconds before they push. And what I was thinking is they have a terrific nade count. They have like four Molotovs, two smoke splashes galore. They had all of this utility to use, three, three Molotovs, but they had all of this utility to use. But because they run the clock down so low, they don't have any time to use it. Yeah, and this position that Get Right plays is one that routinely gets smoked out, right? Yeah. So normally he wouldn't be having that angle to shoot at. You're right. 7-12 the scoreline here, and Mixwell. It's interesting, Mixwell's at seven kills, and yet Optic are doing really well in the game. What happens if Mixwell gets unleashed? I, it, that's where we go into overdrive, but we're still waiting for Rush. You know, like Rush is actually at 23 right now. He has kind of calmed down just a little bit. Nice Molotov right there into Soares. Rush and Tarek roasting alive. That's a start for NIP. They're going to feel good about that because now they have the nades. And this is a pretty even buy between both of these teams. An excellent start. There you go. The Kobe nade. Dead on. Drops Rush. Yeah, so the 30 bomb not going to be uh, any closer this round. That's just unfortunate. I made you think that Optic actually wanted to go for a quick play to B. Now they're going to try and change it up. Mixwell has got that AWP. But Pyth is also holding along with the AWP for NIP. He's got the angle exactly from the site. Mixwell so defensive over here. If he can win the fight versus Pyth, then there's definitely a way back into this one for Optic. But they sort of need to do that. No fear on Mixwell checking all the restrooms there. I mean, we saw how they themselves held pretty close. There's the flash bang in. Leg shot from Pyth. That's still very important. And then pop flash come out once again. Mixwell taking the shot. Now Pyth has the angle. They're just playing this game. And they all both know it very well. The bomb is still over by the restrooms. No one moving any closer at the moment. Finally, they're going to go for it here. 34 seconds left. And NIP in a good position. Pyth's going to pick up the kill. Mixwell still can't find this shot. He's still edged out on the right-hand side. Pyth very nearly going down. There's the kill anyway. Finally, he's going to get shot in the back, but it's way too late. Freiburg ending the round, but that round is all Pyth. It's also all Nip and Optic just not getting anything out of this. They get hard <laughs> countered with their Soar's take, with the Incendiary splitting them, doing massive damage to Russian and Stanislaw. But then when they try and rotate back up into mid, Nip are playing so passively. Optic, that's back-to-back -back rounds now where they're, they're trying to push up onto A site with like 20 seconds left with nothing. <laughs> oh, dude, this is brutal. Someone went all in on this. Of course I've got the bow and arrow. <laughs> and of course they put Duncan in the Iron Man suit. God forbid that ever happens. <laughs> that would that would be truly a nightmare scenario. You've really got the epic, you know, the epic face going right now. Man. That's perfect. Yeah, it have to be uh, one hell of a tight suit to to make me look like that. They've really got the technology running here. Twelve and eight is the scoreline, and um, I'll take a running out of money here. NIP, I, I feel like they're coming back in this game now. This is where I was a little bit worried going into the second half with Optic. Yes, they got the pistol round, and that was definitely key. But Optic struggled a lot on their T side yesterday versus FaZe, where I, they just got kind of shut out. And I feel like we're, we're kind of seeing that again here from Optic. Back-to-back -back rounds where nothing really worked for them. Now they have to eco. It's going to keep allowing Nip to get back into this game, get rolling. There's the opening shot from Pyth to start things off. And if NIP can have like that perfect anti-eco and really get that economy so that they have the nades at round after round, I'm, I'm starting to wonder where Optic are going to figure out, you know, like how to get onto the sites as a unit. Yeah, they were struggling to find that answer the last time they played T side, so hopefully they will have made some improvements at least since the last time. That would be nice. Another thing is that they used quite a few timeouts versus phase off. I'm a bit surprised to see that they haven't used a single one yet. Well, gonna get that refrag on Forest. Still only puts them at a four on three here, and with the limited equipment, I doubt it'll have a big impact. That Deagle, though, you never know on that fly. We've seen him hit some pretty crazy shots in the past with it. He's not in position to do it right now. Pine at the edge, hoping to catch somebody. Nafly sneaking into the B bomb side. He's sort of trying to actually fight them down there. If he can create space in B, that's not at all a bad, uh, a bad way to start goes down. Stanislaw is next, and then Mixwell last. The UMP tapping away. It's going to be Pint again here. Another triple kill for him. He's now all the way up to 16 kills. He's overtaken, even get right. And Rush has just had a hard time. He's walking down that A defense. This is where I want to see Optic take the time out, though. They haven't taken a single one yet. I'd like to see them go for it here going into this buy round just to try and breathe a little bit. 
and maybe talk over what they want to try and achieve here because they are struggling. They're running these round these clocks down very low, and in general, when you see that from a team, it means that they they're struggling to, to really find that that signal to go, that timing to go. Something is missing, and so they this this would be the perfect time, but they're not going to do it. It's going to be full AKs across the board, and very passive stuff here at mid as well. Not willing to give that first pick to Nip. A fairly regular setup, I would say, for an IP. Get right, going to be aggressive with Freiburg. They're going to go and check Sewer. That's a good start for them. They have more map control than Optic are currently aware of, and that means the defense already should be a bit better. Pyth, is he going to be able to get this shot in, or are they going to flash through? That's a very easy kill. Mixwell could have had someone flashing him in there, but now Terry going to hunt him down. Headshot to the back of the head of Pyth, and Forrest also goes down. A bomb site fully open now, and they are not even going to rush right in there. They're going to take their time and put up the grenades and exist. How does he win that fight? And why did Rush have the bomb now? It's dropped right in front of Exist, who does go down eventually, but still, that could be a big misstep here. Freiburg finding another headshot through now. It's a one on one. Nafly versus Freiburg. This was Optic's round to win. And they made a one critical mistake, and that could really cost them. Freiburg now making his way up the stairwell. Nafly is there. Freiburg, he can't get the spray in. Naf is going to save them once again for a triple kill of his own. A 1v1 situation, finally, and it goes Optic's way, but that's cutting it so close. Unreal close for both teams. Because Exist, if he should lose that duel, and it should be over for Nip. The retake, they should be backing off, saving their guns, etc. right? Because yes. Exist wins the key fight, and Exist has been fairly quiet so far. I mean, he's up there with 11 kills, but that's a far cry from the performance that we saw from him versus Hellraisers yesterday, so... We need, we need these key players to start waking up here because Optic, they've certainly got it. They're running in for the Molotov. You're supposed to extinguish that with a smoke before you go into it. It's simple math, you know. They just didn't make it work. And then they run back out anyway, so... Not only did they take a, a lot of damage, but they also didn't get any map control. It's, yeah. it's the worst of all worlds. It's kind of giving it up, exactly. They're just rotating back around now. They want to get back over towards A, it looks like. Double stack over in Connector as well right now for NIP between Forest and Get Right. There's quite a presence in the mid portion of the map here for Nip. And so Optic moving to the extremities, that could actually work out for them. They have to be a little bit careful about Rush with that bomb in mid, but he is going to rotate back with the group. It's that four-man hit squad moving together. Nafly going to be hanging around on the edges looking for somebody lurking from Nip. They're trying for it. They walk past the connector here. Get right is in such an interesting position because you can just walk up the stairwell and take a quick peek in at them. And can they handle that? The answer is no. Get right going to hit the headshot on Nafly. They're trying to hunt him down. Forrest to back it up. And that duo working out very well. Now, two men down. There should be no contest here for NIP. They've got 30 seconds left to try and get the bomb down. Obviously, some great Molotovs are raining in, but. I don't see how they can win this round. Not anymore. Pyth is still alive on bank, holding that angle. Rush needs to get up here and get that bomb plant immediately. And Tarek had to stay alive, but it's not going to happen. And now Nip have an avenue onto the site. Mixwell holding that line, however, is going to take Get Right out. But it's still a two-man advantage here for NIP. They still have the flash. There it goes. Not going to be effective on Rush. Certainly effective on Freiburg, but it doesn't matter. There are too many bodies here. 1v2, 1v1. How has Mixwell turned this around? Two headshots, and it's on Exist now to clutch it. Another 1v1 situation here between both of these teams. And Mixwell is going to make the jump out to safety. Exist, does he have the time? And it doesn't seem like it. What is this, though? Mixwell is a crazy person. Wait. Imagine if Exist just went for the defuse immediately. Mixwell, we couldn't do anything. Exist, he's going to be on it, but Mixwell, the timing is simply god tier. And that's the quad kill to save the round. Optic Gaming, they bring it back to 14 here with Mixwell decimating NIP. That play is so dangerous. Just imagine if Exist was close enough to somehow hear that run. If he had moved closer in, in, in just a little bit. Might be the time wasted by Exist as well. I mean, he, he, it's not planted in the conventional spot at all on Optus, but on the edge of Optus as well. This is a real problem though for Nip. That's two 1v1 clutches that are making all of the difference for Optic. In straight play, it's, I mean, Optic have managed to turn these into chaotic situations and they keep coming out, of, coming out ahead because if they're playing a standard game, Nip are pummeling them at least in the first three rounds where Nip had rifles. Now it's just easy street here for Optic. This is an anti-eco round. Exist will find one shot. Rush taking quite a bit of damage, but he does have his entire team behind him to back him pretty much. And Stanislaw, big spray from him, getting shot in the back by Nafly. <laughs> oh! 
Grenade right on get right. I mean, they lost way more than they should optic in this round. And it's partly because NIP did have one flashbang that they sort of put into that tunnel and it worked out. Um, he's one bullet left. Good, uh, good job on our observers there. Two kills with one bullet as he said 75. It actually can't even be done, but still. Um, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I mean, it is get right. The man is a legend. <laughs> if ever there was a way. Hide in the corner, get the kill with the C set, and then knife the other guy. There you go. I mean, hey, we've had, we had a pistol round not too long ago where Device got two knife kills in one round on this map, on overpass. Oh. He gets the head, he gets the shot too. Not the head shot. Yeah, but, but he tagged up Mixwell pretty decently. <laughs> actually, it was the head shot. Yeah, I think mistake. it was. Match point here for Optic Gaming, 15 to 9. Ladies and gentlemen, they just they keep doing this, Optic Gaming. Think about the teams that they have taken down. Even oh, this is the bit, this is the important thing for me. Once if you come out of nowhere like Optic sort of did, and then you suddenly do really well, you beat teams like Astralis and everything else, mm -hmm. then you're on everybody's radar, and that's where your job gets so much harder. People will study you, they will look at the demos, and that's usually where I would have expected a team like Optic to have a huge dip, where suddenly it's really rough. And I mean they did lose some games to Astralis following that. But, I mean, against everybody else, they're still playing a really high level. I think this is just very impressive. It relies on chaos. Like, those two rounds where they win it, it's just like chaos rounds, all out, balls out, just run. And when the dust settles, you're praying that you win the 1v1, and they did it twice in a row. And that's just a kick in the teeth for Nip. Because it goes the other way, 1v1, you clutch it. All of a sudden, Optic are looking like fish in the, you know, out of water. So this is just, I mean, it's the closest of margins here for Optic, who have pretty much who have only played Overpass, if I'm mistaken. So finally, it seems like it's going their way. Yeah, maybe there's a reason they they kept letting it in. Won three rounds in a row here. And NIP's economy to try and defend from this is really not great. They've just used another grenade. They've got the Molotov and the smoke left and a single flashbang. So not that much to work with for the Swedish side. Python Forest, they're on the other side of restrooms here. If they sneak up, they could maybe find something. But this feels like a fake into a B push. I haven't been hitting B much at all, Optic. It's a good time to change. Perfectly timed flash there to take down Freiburg. Opens it up, but Exist is there to hold. He picks up two kills, still alive, and manages to make it back in the water. Get right trying to buy time, and he still gets a kill out of that as well. And Nip showing that they're not out of this yet. The three players alive on B, certainly putting up quite a fight. Stanislaw's flanking in behind, so if, if Rush can just stay alive right now, if he doesn't get taken out first, maybe Stanislaw can actually do this. Exist. Not being found yet. Rush almost getting the kill. There's the one on Exist. And now comes Stan in just at the right time, 14 seconds left. They're gonna get the bomb plant down, stand up at the side of this. He gets the one kill in, Pipe shooting him in the back. There's one kill and Rush gets the headshot for the triple, 16 to nine and 27 kills on Rush. What a performance here from a young superstar. Very, very well done. They take out NIP and proceed to have a 2-1 scoreline. One more map win and they're gonna be in the major. NIP now with their backs against the wall. What a qualifier this is, and it is nowhere near done yet. Exactly. It's not even done yet. We have another day of this.